Thanks for joining me today. I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll give you a tutorial of some of the basics of working with Adobe Fresco for Windows. If you happen to be working on iPad, you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Adobe Fresco is a pen and touch optimized digital painting app that debuted on iOS and has now made its way to the Windows platform. It takes the digital painting features from Photoshop and puts them into their own dedicated app. But it even goes beyond what Photoshop's brushes can do. At this point, Fresco only works on the iPad and certain Windows pen and touch enabled computers, such as the Surface Pro, Surface Book, Surface Studio, Surface Go, and the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 13 and 16. Fresco does not work on Windows desktop computers. There is a free version of Adobe Fresco and there is a paid version that you can upgrade to. The paid version will allow you to import your own custom brushes or brushes that are available in Adobe's extended brush library. You also get 100 gigabytes of cloud storage and you can export high resolution files. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Adobe, but Adobe did send me Fresco to review as I please. All opinions in this tutorial are my own. I'll be using Adobe Fresco on my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 16 second generation. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Adobe Fresco app. Let's go ahead and start by taking a tour of the interface. The interface is sort of like your desk. You might have your brushes over here and you might have your paints down here. You might have some more paper over here. So you can get to all of the tools and features of Adobe Fresco from the interface. And the interface is meant to be simple and intuitive. You can interact with the interface using your fingers. You can touch these different buttons and you can do different kinds of gestures to move your canvas around. And you can also navigate using your pen to click like a mouse on these different icons. So to give you an overview of the interface, we have the title bar here. Then beneath that, we have our home menu. This is what you'll see when you first launch Adobe Fresco. And this gives you quick access to your recent documents. You can also view them in list view here so you can see more details about when they were created. You can create a new folder to store your documents in. You can create new documents, import documents, view your deleted documents, and you can get some learning resources. So if you're just starting out, you'll wanna go ahead and create a new document. I have a blank document I already created here, so I'll just click on that. And our document opens within the interface. We can see the title of our document up here at the top and we can see how close we're zoomed into it. Undo and redo buttons, which we'll come back to. We have a help button. We have a button to export our artwork once we're finished creating it. We have a button for settings, and we have a full screen button that we can use to hide and show our user interface. But we'll be coming back to this stuff. Over on the left side of the screen, we have our toolbar. This has all of our brush tools and various tools that we can use to create artwork. It also has our color chip we can use to select color and some various tool properties. These tool properties will change depending on the different tools that you have selected. Over on the right side of the screen, we have the taskbar, and the taskbar has our layers, which we can show and hide. It has our layer properties. It has a button to create new layers, to show and hide layers, and to access our layer actions. We'll be coming back to the taskbar and layers a little bit later. You'll also notice that we have our layer thumbnails, which shows us how many layers we have and what's on those layers. So that's the user interface. Now let's take a look at what we can do with this interface. So let's do some first time doodling here. We wanna select a brush tool. We have three different kinds of brush tools. We have pixel brushes, we have live brushes, and we have vector brushes. Let's go ahead and just choose the first one, which is pixel brushes. Let's click on this button. That brings up our brush selection menu and we can choose from all the different types of brushes. We can see our currently selected brush here and a preview of what the stroke might look like. By default, you'll probably be on basic here and you'll probably have the hard round brush selected, so I'll go ahead and select that. Once you've selected the brush that you want, you can just click on your canvas, and now you can start painting with that brush. Now this is just a very basic brush here. It cannot sense pen pressure, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this brush's menu, and I'm gonna choose hard round variable. Now if I paint with this brush, I can use light pressure or heavier pressure to get a thicker or thinner line, and that will allow me to draw very naturally. Now, if I've made a big mess on my canvas, there's a couple of different ways to clear that out. One is you can use undo, and you can tap this button here to undo gradually. You can also redo if you like. You can also tap with two fingers, and that will undo each time you tap. Or if you use three fingers to tap, then you will redo. 
The only problem with that is that's also a shortcut to bring up the Wacom radial menu, which you can see here. You may want to go ahead and disable that if that's getting in your way. You can just click the X to close that. Another way to clear what's on your canvas is to tap on the layer and then choose Delete Layer. Now you're left with one layer, which is your background layer. It's good to paint on layers. That way your paint is separate from your canvas, which makes it easier to change. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this new layer button to create a new layer. And now if I paint and I'm not happy with that, if I want to, if it's faster than doing undo, I can simply delete that layer and create a new layer to start over. So right now I'm painting with pixel brushes and pixel brushes are made out of pixels. So if I go ahead and zoom in, which I can do by putting two fingers on my canvas and then spreading them apart from each other, I can zoom in here really closely and eventually we will start to see pixels. These are the individual dots that make up your image. Now your canvas size will determine how many pixels are in your image. Right now the document that I'm working with is 3840 by 2160 pixels, which are the dimensions that I chose. So there are a lot of pixels here. If I were using a smaller canvas size, then there would be fewer pixels. And these lines would likely be a lot blockier. If I wanna go ahead and reset the view of my canvas and shrink it back down, I can simply do a quick pinch like this to shrink everything back down and snap it to 100%. So zooming in and out is easy. You just spread your fingers apart to zoom in, bring them back together to zoom back out. And if you wanna quickly reset your canvas, just do a quick pinch. You can also pan the view of your canvas by placing two fingers on it and dragging it around. And you can use two fingers to also rotate your canvas like this. And you can zoom and pan and rotate all at the same time. It works very nicely here on the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro 16. So pixel brushes are made of pixels, but we have other kinds of brushes. We have live brushes, which are also made of pixels. If I click on this brush, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a watercolor brush called Watercolor Round Detail. I'll paint a stroke with that. Now these are pixel brushes, but if we zoom into these and we select another color by clicking on our color chip icon here and we choose a red and we paint into that, we can see that because these are live watercolor brushes, the paint kind of mixes and swirls together. And this paint will remain live or wet and you can continue painting into it. But if we zoom in really closely, we can see that this is still made out of pixels. Now if we select the next type of brush, which are vector brushes, vector brushes are not made out of pixels. So if I go ahead and draw with this vector brush here, you can see if I zoom in closely, no matter how closely I zoom in to that vector brush, the line is always going to remain sharp. And that's because these strokes are based on a mathematical calculation. So they're not made out of pixels, they're just made out of different points and it draws a line from point to point to create a shape. So you would typically use pixel-based brushes for doing more painterly style artwork, and you would use vector style brushes for line art and artwork that you want to be nice and crisp and clear no matter what size you print it at. But you can combine the two, which we'll look at in a bit. I'm gonna go back to the live brushes here. There's also another type of live brush, if I go back, and that is the oil type. I'll select oil paint flat, and if I go ahead and paint with this and zoom into it, you can see this is also made out of pixels, but it has some paint depth to it. We can kind of smudge that around. We can also use lighter pressure to get this canvas texture or heavier pressure to have the paint go into that texture. We can also mix colors into that. I could select a yellowish color like this and I can mix in that yellowish color to create a blend. I can also dab with this brush just to create little stamps like this. I don't have to just draw strokes. And you can see those dabs have some paint depth to them as well. I'm gonna go back to my pixel brush tool. I'm gonna to click this back arrow and this will take me back to my list of categories. Now these categories have all different kinds of brushes. We have brushes that could be useful for comics. These give you half tones and all kinds of different shading techniques. We have dry media brushes like graphite and pastel. You could scroll down in this list too. There's usually more brushes down at the bottom. We have effects brushes. They give you different kinds of natural effects. We have ink brushes that are good for inking. We have lettering brushes that are good for lettering and calligraphy. We have markers. We have painting brushes, which give you a nice painterly effect. Lots of painterly options here. 
There are rake style brushes, which give you a nice multi bristle effect like this. And there are sketching brushes, such as pens and pencils. I'm going to select the pencil brush. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these layers here. And I'll create a new layer to draw on. I'm going to select kind of a pencil color here, like this dark gray. And if I draw with my pen upright, then I get a pencil line like this. But if I draw with my pen tilted sideways, then I can shade with the side of my pencil. And if I begin to rotate it upright, you can see that I can change the angle of the pencil and change the way that the tip interacts with the paper. So that gives me a really nice natural pencil effect where I can draw and shade very easily. If I use heavier pressure, my shading is harder and darker. If I use lighter pressure, then my shading is lighter and more transparent. So this feels very much like a natural drawing experience. Now your pen of course has to support pen tilt. The Wacom Pro Pen 2 does. So I'm able to tilt my pen and get some various effects. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. And I also want to mention that you don't necessarily have to create a new layer here when you delete that layer. You could just start drawing like this and it will automatically create a new layer for you if there's only one layer remaining. So I'm going to go ahead and show you just kind of how you could use these brushes. I could sketch a circle here with my pencil, then I could switch to my vector brush here, I could draw a nice circle here like this, and I could create a new layer, tap and hold it, then move it beneath that line that I drew there for the ink outline. I could select something like this live watercolor brush, watercolor round detail, select a different color, let's say red, Make my brush much bigger. Could paint in there to fill that in. Select another color, let's say maybe a yellowish color, and blend some of that into it. Make an even brighter yellow, put some of that into it. And this is a simple drawing, but this gives you an idea of how you can create vector lines for your line work and then fill those lines in with pixel based brushes. So if I zoom into this now, you can see the edges are still very nice and sharp where I use the ink outline with the vector brushes. But then inside of that, I have this nice painterly fill that I wouldn't be able to get with vector brushes. So combining the two will give you some really nice effects. Now obviously I painted over the edge there. I can switch to my eraser tool here, and I can simply erase. If I want my eraser to be bigger, I can change the size of it down here. I can clean that up. If I don't want that sketch anymore, I can hide that sketch layer. And there we go, we have our sample line art. Now it's important to note that vector layers have special vector properties only while they're in Adobe Fresco, as do these live paint layers. These are only editable with the live paint effect inside of Adobe Fresco. If we were to export this image, let's say as a PSD, and bring it into Photoshop, we would lose that live paint and vector editability. There is a way to export vector to Adobe Illustrator, but we'll discuss that a little bit later. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete these layers. I'll go ahead and zoom back out just a bit. So we know how to choose a brush. There's all kinds of different brushes to choose from. I'm gonna choose this pixel brush in painting called Canvas Brush Flat. I'll go ahead and choose a color that I can see better, maybe like this blue color, and I'll paint with it. We can choose our color with the color chip here. We have this hue ring, which lets us choose the hue of our color. Do we want it to be blue? Do we want it to be red? And so on. And then within the center, we have this square which gives us value or lightness and darkness on the vertical axis. And we have saturation on the horizontal axis, which is intensity of color. So muted colors are toward the left, more vibrant colors are toward the right. And if we go up and to the right, then we get the most vibrant color possible. So if I want a really vibrant red, then I go all the way up to the top right corner. You can also change the opacity of that color. If you wanted to be able to paint with a more opaque color, we can choose black here from the black swatch or white from the white swatch. We can also choose completely transparent if we want to paint with that. But of course that doesn't give us anything when we paint. We'll need to add a little bit of opacity. Select a red color. Now when we paint, we get transparent paint that builds up. So it gives you kind of a nice build up effect like you might get from markers. There are more controls here in the color panel, but we'll be looking at those a little bit later. But for now, this should give you an idea of how you can pick a color. Let's go ahead and go back to the eraser tool now. now. The eraser tool we can use to erase, but this hard edge doesn't always look very natural. We can go to the eraser tool properties down here and we can lower the flow. 
and that will give us kind of a softer result. Still might not be the kind of look that you want. Let's go back to one of the pixel brushes. I'll go ahead and increase the opacity of that brush. I'll choose a black brush. I'll just put down some black paint here. Now there's this little circle here on our canvas. And this circle kind of stays put no matter where I move the canvas. It's kind of in the UI itself. And this is a touch shortcut. And if I touch this, it turns blue and I can see that it's active. Now if I paint with this brush, I'm erasing with this brush. So I'm getting the texture and the qualities of this brush, but it's working as an eraser. You'll notice that if I press lightly, I get that nice paper texture. I'm just taking off a little bit of paint, and if I press more firmly, then I'm scraping off all the paint. Now if I switch to a different brush, let's say we go back to Comics, we choose Halftone 2, I hold down that button, then I'm erasing with Halftone. If I let go, I'm painting with Halftone. Press it again, then I'm erasing with Halftone. So this is a really handy shortcut. Unfortunately, on the Mobile Studio Pro, it feels like you have to stretch pretty far to press it here, and you can't take it and move it around anywhere else. It's kind of stuck there, so it might not be the best location for it, but it's there if you ever want to use it. So now let's go ahead and wrap things up by taking a look at importing some brushes. In order to do that, we'll go to our brush tool, we'll go to all, and we'll click the plus button down here at the bottom. And we can get more brushes to choose from Adobe's library of brushes, or we can import our own brushes from ABR files. I have three custom brushes that I created in Photoshop. I'll go ahead and import those one at a time. I'll go to my pixel brush tool. I'll go back. And here you can see any brushes I add are going to go to library brushes. Puts them in its own library, and that library has the name of the brush. Here's my brush that I imported. If I go to my brush settings, you can see it looks something like this creates these nice pine trees. Now all of the properties from Photoshop that can be inherited will be inherited, meaning that if I applied some scattering or some transfer properties in Photoshop, the properties that are compatible should translate over to Fresco. So this brush should more or less work the same way it did in Photoshop. So if I go ahead and paint with this brush, you can see I can create these nice pine trees. You can use pen pressure to make lighter, more fainter trees in the distance, or heavier pressure to make bigger trees that are more opaque in the foreground. Let's import another brush. I'll import this fractal veiny brush. Now, unfortunately, it's making a folder every time I'm importing a brush. If you want to make things more tidy, you could export all of your brushes as a brush library and then import that into Fresco. Then all of your brushes will be in one single folder. And I don't see a way to delete custom brushes, so don't add too many. Here's my fractal veiny brush. I can increase the size of that brush. And it looks just like it does in Photoshop. Let's import one more brush, paint splat. Now this brush does not want to import. There must be some setting in this brush that does not work. So not every brush you try to import from Photoshop is going to work. If you are creating brushes in Photoshop, just make sure you make note of the various properties that are available in Fresco, and try not to use any Photoshop properties that are not compatible with Fresco. I have tons of custom Photoshop brushes that you can download. You can get those by becoming a member of my Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten to sign up. I can't guarantee that all of the brushes I create for Photoshop will be compatible with Fresco, but many are. So those are some of the basics of working with Adobe Fresco for Windows. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial that goes into some of the advanced features of Adobe Fresco, I have a downloadable video course that you can check out. I'll put a link to that in the video description. And check out some of the other digital painting tips on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.